Greetings YouTubers, Rymanta here with the inaugural episode of Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer News. There's some good information about the multiplayer portion of Mass Effect 3 that's only posted on the Bioware social network or the Bioware blog, so I thought it might be a good idea to make a video that will relay this info to people who don't visit those places. For example, did you know that Bioware stealthily updates the game every Tuesday by tweaking various statistics for weapons, powers and enemies? These are referred to as balance updates, and it can often make for heated debate and, unfortunately, vile mudslinging on the forums. The balance update for July 24th, 2012 definitely sparked an uproar in the community, with a pretty violent nerf to the Chrissé sniper rifle from the Rebellion DLC pack. I'll post the exact changes on screen, but to sum it up, less damage, slower rate of fire, less ammo in reserve, and more recoil. Balance updates can also occasionally tell you things you didn't know. For example, I did not know that the new N7 Typhoon weapon from the Earth DLC had innate armor penetration like the Widow, Black Widow, and Javelin sniper rifles. Not until the July 24th balance update, at least, that reduced the distance it can penetrate through cover. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to have affected the gun much at all. It still deals massive damage to pretty much everything. Bioware also used the July 24th balance update to fix a nasty glitch that people were exploiting for easy wins and credits. The Cobra missile launcher used to require a brief charge-up time to fire. This has been removed as a glitch in the game code allowed people to switch to specific weapons during the charging period and give themselves a weapon that killed every enemy in one shot. The final three notes here are interesting. Apparently, some of the new gear items were not showing up in the Spectre packs bought from the store, and now the common character cards you can acquire in the two varieties of Spectre pack will award more experience. We end this week's balance update on another bug fix. Better be even more wary on the higher difficulties now. Check them out. One other thing you might not be aware of is that Bioware occasionally like to set some challenges for the community to accomplish every other weekend. These N7 Bounty Weekends offer two goals, one for individual squads and one for the community at large. Completing squad goals are awards commendation packs, which are the only way to acquire four special N7 weapons. There have been eight of these N7 Bounty Weekends so far, and the ninth will be this weekend starting Friday July 27th and ending Monday July 30th. Operation Overwatch tasks us with the following objectives. The squad goal requires you to successfully extract on any difficulty, on any map, and against any enemy type with one small condition. One member of the squad must be a new character from the Earth DLC. The Earth DLC character does not have to be the one that extracts, but they must be in the game where at least one player successfully extracts. The new Earth DLC characters are the N7 Fury Adept, the N7 Destroyer Soldier, the N7 Demolisher Engineer, the N7 Paladin Sentinel, the N7 Shadow Infiltrator, and the N7 Slayer Vanguard. The community or allied goal is for 800,000 successful player extractions. In other words, a full extraction will count as four towards this goal. Again, this can be done on any difficulty, on any map, with any character, and against any enemy type. If the allied goal is completed successfully, everyone will be awarded a victory pack containing one of the new Earth DLC characters, or a rare item if they already have all the customization options unlocked for the Earth DLC characters. Unfortunately, Operation Overwatch has a catch. You see, we failed the last operation, partly because Bioware was very vague and unclear about the details of the Allied goal. This failure will result in the extraction wave taking longer than usual. How much longer has not been revealed by Bioware. Due to the dependence on its content, the newly released Earth DLC pack must be installed to participate in Operation Overwatch. But in order to be recognised as a participant in any operation, you must check that you have a specific option turned on in the Options menu. This is called Upload Gameplay Feedback. Make sure it's set to On 
and you will be rewarded with the packs if you are successful. One last thing about N7 Bounty Weekends. Xbox 360 and PC players will receive an in-game notification when a Bounty Weekend has started in the multiplayer menu. But for weird technical reasons, PlayStation 3 players do not receive this in-game notification despite being included in the Bounty Weekend initiative. So consider yourselves warned. Now for what I hope will be a recurring feature in these news updates, the Community Spotlight! My first spotlight goes to Narida's Class Builder, a handy tool for planning every little facet of your character build. You get extremely in-depth information on class powers, weapons, how equipment and gear affect your character, and more. It's even fully updated with the latest classes and equipment from the Earth DLC, and there's even a mobile version so you can tinker with it on your phone! A link has been provided to both versions of Narida's Class Builder in the description. Hopefully, you'll get as much help from it as I did, and thanks again to Narida. Do you know of anything else awesome made by the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer community? It doesn't have to be a web-based tool like the Class Builder, I'll accept things like standard gameplay videos, useful video guides, basically anything that is Mass Effect 3 multiplayer related, is of a high standard, and is either useful or fun to watch. I will take a look at it, and the absolute best of the best will get featured in the Community Spotlight section of these videos. You can send them to me in one of three ways, either via YouTube PMs, via my Twitter, at RymantiX, or via my Google Mail, RymanAntor at gmail.com. More details in the video description below, as well as links to all of the sources for my information. That's going to do it for this installment of Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer News. See you next week.